Do you ever get tired of going through Canva elements trying to find that perfect element? There's something you're after, something you're trying to create and you're just struggling. You can't quite find the right thing or you've got something that's almost there but it's not quite right. Maybe it doesn't quite suit your branding or part of it's cropped off or there's something not quite right about it. Well in this video I'm going to share some really cool tips and tricks that I've learned along the way so that you can transform existing elements in Canva or things that you've brought in yourself and can actually edit them and transform them into exactly what you need. When you're creating graphics for your own business you really want to make sure that things are on brand, that things are consistent with your existing branding and sometimes this can be frustrating frustrating when you're trying to find certain elements to put in a graphic and you can't find something that's going to work for your brand or maybe you need it to look a certain way have certain features or be completed rather than cut off and cropped in certain areas and it can be really frustrating when you can't find those things that you need but there are workarounds there are things that we can do in Canva to create exactly what we need so you don't have to feel limited and you can really create awesome graphics in Canva with confidence. And speaking of designing with confidence, I have a free DIY design confidence kit which you can download. You will find the link in the description below if you want to grab that. So let's dive in and start having a look at how you can customize different elements in Canva so you can get the exact element you're after and you're not spending hours scrolling and scrolling through elements trying to find that perfect thing feeling so frustrated because you can't find what you need. All right, so our first method is if you are looking through photos and you come across an element that's inside a photo. Say for example, we really like this gold clip. We really wanna grab that. It's great, but it doesn't come on its own. It's within a photo. What we can do is actually grab that photo. Then we want to click on edit. Then you're going to choose magic grab. Now we can select that item. Now see here, it doesn't select just that item. Occasionally this will happen. You do have the option to use the brush here or we can do this in parts. So this really depends on the image, what you're trying to grab and how these tools allow you to do that. So let's say we just grab this. So we're now just gonna pull it off the page. Now we can actually remove the page, get rid of it. And now what we wanna do is get rid of the excess. So we can actually go to background remover and we can get rid of it that way. So we're gonna click on it and it's probably going to be like, well, there's no background. But what we're gonna do is then click on it again. And now we've got the erase tool. And this is where you can take your time and actually get rid of anything excess there. So as I said, this method, you may not need to actually go and you know do the background remover, do this, do that. You're going to, it's really depending on what that image is and what's around it. So you might be able to just grab it using that grab tool. If it's got a really plain background behind it, you might be able to just use the background remover if there's nothing else in the way. Or if in a case like this, you're finding that it's grabbing extra bits, it's hard to remove things, you can grab it, then go in and use the background remover to erase any excess bits that we don't want. So to get things like straight lines and that, you may have to take your time, do it carefully. But if this is an element you want to use again and again, it's probably worth it because now you've got that element. So now we've got the clip and we can use that in our graphics. So features like this do require Canva Pro. So it is worth investing in Canva Pro. It is not that expensive. And if you are DIYing your own graphics, it really is worth it. When it comes to creating graphics, this is probably the most cost effective way you can be creating graphics for your business anyway. If you were to hire out design, if you were to buy more expensive software like Adobe, things like that, that's all going to cost you a lot more. Canva really is quite cheap when it comes to the design world. I do understand if this may be a limitation for you, so you may not be able to do all the tricks in this video, but you will still find some tricks that you can use the Canva free version for, which is still going to help you with creating elements that are on brand. Now, one tool that you can use a workaround for is the cutout tool. So if you're trying to just simply remove background from something, you can use online free tools for removing Removing backgrounds. If you just Google background remover tool, you will find things that you can use to remove a background, save the image as a PNG and re-upload it to Canva. So if that's the only thing that's getting in your way from creating what you need, that is a workaround. But some of these other AI features, there aren't really workarounds for that. But I really do think if you're using this a lot and you're finding this sort of thing really helpful, it is worth getting Canva Pro. And if you want to support me, you'll find my Canva Pro affiliate link down in the description below. 
So our next one is color correction. So say we find an element we really like, like we really like this pen, but the color just isn't on brand. It's not quite right. Well, when you click on it, you will see up here these colors. Now we can try them out. Sometimes it will instantly work. There we go. We've got the color you wanted. Great. If it does not work, however, if it doesn't quite give you what you wanted, you can then go into edit and then adjust and we can play around with colors here. So maybe that was almost there, but we just want to tweak it a little bit and you can actually come in here and make some small adjustments. So you can adjust things here. You've also got the color edit over here that you can play with too. So there's a lot of different tools you've got in here to try and correct that color and get it to what you want. So you can still use that element and make it more on brand for you by changing up the colors. Now for some fun ones, we're going to go into Canva AI. This is where we're actually going to create what you need through AI. So what we're going to do is go back here into Canva AI and you're going to make sure you click on this create an image and then you're going to describe what it is you want to create. So you can see here I've done some other things in the past, create things. Um, here we've got a blue vintage 80s telephone. We've created an iPad on a desk propped up facing a camera straight on. So really give it the details based on what you are trying to create. So think about how you want it to face the camera, what color you want it to be, what do you want in the background, all those sort of things. So you can see these sort of prompts I've used in the past to create stuff. You can use that to create something if you just are really struggling, can't find what you need, you really need a particular element or particular photo. This is where you can actually try and generate things using Canva AI. So all you have to do here is type in here your prompt. So let's just reuse a prompt. So let's try the vintage 80s telephone. So you say a vintage 80s telephone. Let's, this time we'll make it pink. And there we go. See, we've got some really cute ones through that prompt. So this can be a really great way of getting what you need when you are struggling to find that perfect image. Now with AI, there's also another tool called Magic Media. So over here, you'll see Magic Media. And this is where you can actually have different types of things. So you can have images like we did before, or you can even do things like graphics and videos. Now the video one may be a bit more iffy, but the graphic one can be helpful if you're trying to generate a more graphic image rather than a photo type image. So let's say we're going to have tools for a hairdresser flat lay style. Then we've got in here style, so you can choose the kind of style you want. So let's say we want this hand drawn style. Then we're going to generate the graphic and see what it creates. All right, so here we've got some, so we can put them in our page here. Now, obviously you can change it up. So if you didn't quite like what it did, you can go generate again, you can give it more details. And again, we can use those different tools to change the colors. If the colors that actually came out with weren't quite right, you can try in your prompt to tell it what colors you want, but I found that cannot always work. So if you try that and doesn't quite give you the result you want, you can then come in here, do this thing where you choose the colors in here, change them. If that's not working again, we can go back into edit and adjust and change things up that way. So there are ways to adjust things based on what it's given you. So maybe, you know, you've played around you finally got the look you want, but you just need to adjust the colors. You can easily then just play around to adjust the colors. So you something like that. And as you saw in there, in the magic media, there are lots of different styles too. If we go back into styles, there are heaps of different styles. So you can pick a style that's going to suit your brand and suit the look that you're trying to create. So maybe you found some elements in Canva that are the right um, actual elements in terms of what's in the graphic, but the style isn't quite right. So being able to use these styles is really great because you can create something that feels like the right style for your brand. Now, another really helpful thing is magic expand. And this is where we have issues with crop. So if something that you want to use is cropped funny, so see here at the top of her head's cropped here, it doesn't complete the fabric. If you are found this perfect image, it's just what you need, but for the page size you're trying to do, or maybe you're trying to add an outline, so let's um, add a background here. So like this, if I've added an outline, see with that crop, it looks really awkward because it's cropped at the top of her head. What we can do in this case is use magic expand. So you want to click on your image, go to edit, then you're going to choose here, magic expand down the end. Then you're going to decide where you want it to expand. So here we want it to expand out the back there. Then we press expand. And there it's got a few different options for us so we can find the one we like. Something like that could be very helpful. See, something like that, it's still cropped it, but something like that. Look, now we've actually got a finished edge there. Then this one here, we want to extend above her head. 
Now, you probably want to do that before you actually add the outline. So I don't know how the results will be with an outline, but you probably want to extend you probably want to do the expand first, then add those extra effects. So because we've already had the background remover and that, it sort of adds a bit of a strange blackness to it. So as you can see, it's added the top of her head, but because it was a, um, a cutout, a background removed image, it's gonna add a black in there. So what I would really recommend with this particular tool, if you're going to do this, is first use the original image, do the expand to add the extra part of it that you need then do the other edit so if you then want to add background remover add outline shadows anything like that do that after first do the expand to get that extra bit of the picture that you need then add your other edits next say we've found something that has the right pose but the wrong elements so say we were working on something for farming for example or gardening and we found this image it's a really beautiful image but we actually wanted her to be holding carrots and it was really hard to find an image of someone holding carrots it's like we found this great pose though of somebody putting their hand out holding something so it's a great pose to start with we just want to change that image in there what we're going to do is go to edit and we're going to choose magic edit now we're going to describe what we want instead so as you can see here we have a click or brush so you're going to choose the area so here we can just choose those flowers but if it doesn't have something you can easily click you can also use brush to show the area you want to change and we're going to say here bunch of carrots now obviously the more detail you give probably the better actual end result you're going to get so if you go into more detail you're really going to get what you really envision to so do play around with it do keep at it to get what you want but this is a great way to create an image that you're after when you just can't find the right image but you found a good pose or you've got, found a good sort of setting something about it that image is a good starting point but you just need to change one element of it now our next method is background generator. So let's say we've got a nice photo where the actual subject in the photo is just right, but it's in the wrong setting. Maybe we didn't want her in a desert, we want her in a forest. We're trying to find a good picture of someone hiking in a forest. This picture was great of a person, but the wrong setting. So what can we do here? We can go to edit. We'll choose this new one, background generator, and we're gonna describe what we want as the background. Then you're gonna hit generate. And then you can choose the one that you like the look of. So here we've got this one here. There we go. We now have her in a forest instead. So that one is a really handy tool when you just need to change up what's in the background. Now for our final one, when you're trying to create a particular element, but you've only found different parts of that element and such. So say we wanted a fruit bowl with bananas in it. We found a great bowl. We found some bananas, but we couldn't find an actual bowl of bananas. What we can do is actually combine them. So obviously you could put something in or on top like that, but that's not quite what we need. What we actually want to do here is duplicate that bowl. We're going to go to background remover. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out that little bit at the top there. So it looks like the banana is actually in the bowl. So we're going to go background remover again and erase tool. So remember we used that erase tool earlier. For cutting out things that it can be really handy when you just need to rub out certain sections of things using that background remover and then you know clicking it again to get the erase tool and there we have it now we have bananas in a bowl so i really hope that you found this helpful if you've been struggling spending hours and hours going through elements feeling frustrated because you can't find what you need and nothing feels quite right or you're using things that feel a little bit off and it's kind of ruining your branding a bit. I hope this has now given you the tools that you need to create the elements you need to stay on brand, but also have a variety of different elements you can use in your graphic. If you'd like to learn more about using Canva, about graphic design and branding, be sure to subscribe and happy creating.